Hey guys, God bless you. I want to share a word with you today um, that I heard from the Lord as I was in corporate worship this weekend. And oftentimes when, um, I believe this is probably true for you as well, but when you come in to worship, a place of worship, both corporately or when we can find a moment to get alone with the Lord or worship Him, maybe in our car or in our closet, wherever, worship has a way of allowing the distractions and the swirling busyness and to-do lists and the worries that bombard our minds to lift. And that's what was happening in this moment in, a, in corporate worship. I was able, the distractions and the burdens that had been on my mind were starting to lift. And it's in those moments that I believe the Lord has more access to be able to show us what's on his heart. Um, when those distractions dissipate. And so in that time, I, I started to, um, as I was felt led by the Spirit to intercede for the nations, and specifically the nation of the United States of America, um, as that is the nation that I live in, but also that um, I believe is under such attack specifically in the area of freedom and to specifically in the area of truth and righteousness. Um, we see this coming against the nations of the earth, that those are, at, those are threatened, those are endangered, you might say. Um, but as I interceded for the nations and for the U.S., I heard the Lord say, freedom is my idea. Freedom comes from me, it originates in me, and it has always been my design for my people. And so I believe that the enemy wants to cloak himself in the voice of a religious spirit, a religious, in a religious way, especially in the churches, to say, um, you know, you're just being a nationalist. You're not, you're, you're choosing nationalism over your faith and you're being, you know, you're, you have to be either a patriot or a Christian, but you can't be both um, or whatever it is. And I believe the Lord just basically, you know, destroyed that religious mindset and broke it and broke it into pieces because this nation the united states was founded on people coming to be able to live in freedom to worship god to worship him without tyranny without the heavy hand of religious taskmasters over them and that is exactly what christ came to set people free from. That is exactly when you study the Old Testament, what the Lord had in mind when he told Abraham to go to a new land and he started the nation of Israel. His design was for his people to be set free from the tyranny of other nations, from the tyranny of worldly systems, and to have a land that they could worship him freely. And the one way that they would worship him freely is to live in intimacy with him and agreement with his ways. That was the, the condition, if, if you might say, is living in agreement and intimacy with the Father and, and his design and the goodness of his design. When we do that, his design is for us to live in freedom. So it, it doesn't just apply to our inward um, situation. He wants freedom for us as his people in our inner world, in our inner life. But he designed freedom to also be manifested outwardly in the nations and in his and in the cities and communities. And that's why the United States is so distinct because it is a nation that was founded under the principle of freedom, freedom to worship God, freedom to live rightly before God and express our worship to him without tyranny. And you can see that that is completely under attack. But I believe that having that foundation of knowing it's okay to be passionate about what this nation stood for when it was originated and that, that that is the heart of God to continue for this nation. Freedom is essential. And freedom, when you have a nation that's free, you can actually fight to defend those in other nations who don't have that same freedom. And when you have freedom, you have the power and authority to step in for those who are being abused and under tyranny around you. So freedom is essential and freedom is from God. It originates from him. It is something that he designed for his people. And so I want to read some verses over us today 
Um, and I'm going to add a couple more in the description because I can't read all of them. There's so many verses about freedom. But this, just let this wash over you if you've come under the religious spirit, the religious lie that would say, you shouldn't care about having freedom in your nation. Just, you know, just care about sharing the gospel. Well, in reality, freedom to share the gospel is something that is essential to this nation. And it allows us to go into other nations and share the gospel at a, at a, at a level that we can't even fathom. And so let's listen to what the word of God says about freedom. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Galatians 5.13, for you were called to freedom, brothers. Do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. 2 Corinthians 3.17, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So God designed freedom for our inner world to not come under the yoke of sin and slavery to sin and slavery to our, our lust, the lust of our flesh to just do whatever, whatever's around us or to copy and mimic the world. No, we've been set free from that. So let's not go back into that. But he's also speaking to how the church in, lives on a daily life, in their daily lives. Let's not be bound to the religious system and the tyranny that the Pharisees had set up before Christ came. And it's also speaking to the freedom that the Lord had in mind for his people, that they not live under the Babylonian systems of the world and under the slavery that comes on people's lives when they start worshiping false gods and, and following under uh, false, um, false worshiping governments. And the Spirit of the Lord will bring freedom. So let the Holy Spirit lead. Let the Holy Spirit have access to your life, to your church, to your home, to your nation, to your jobs, to whatever sphere of influence you have. The Holy Spirit will bring freedom to that. And when people are free, they're free to love in the Spirit of Christ. If they're bound up and under tyranny, we can't truly love because we ha we're not operating in freedom. John 8, 32 says, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And that is why in a, in when something tries to clamp down and steal freedom, that's the first thing that will go is they will try to steal truth, remove truth from the equation because truth enables freedom to come forth. Just as the word of God says in Romans 8, 21, it says that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Even creation yearns for freedom to be set free from the bondage of sin and tyranny and the egocentric systems of the world. Creation groans to have that same freedom that we as, as, as God's children yearn and groan for as well. It's built into our DNA to live in freedom, to worship God and walk with God in freedom. And lastly, Psalm 119, 45 says, I will walk about in freedom for I have sought out your precepts. So this is one to me is, it speaks volumes about what, what's going on in the nations right now, because freedom is essential, but freedom comes when we seek out God, when we seek out truth, when we find truth, if we're willing to face it, if we're willing to face God and what he says and how he says we should live and what he says is right and just and fair, then we can walk in freedom. We can't have freedom if we want to ride the fence and have one side of our life in the world and one side of our life with God. Freedom comes in complete abandonment to the ways of God and actually saying and submission to God. It's an, it's a, a paradox that freedom, absolute freedom is for those who submit completely and fully to the Lord Jesus. And it's a beautiful thing to live in freedom in Christ. And that is the design of God for you, for your church, for your home, for your city, for your nation. And that is the will and design of God for this nation, the United States of America, as it was founded. And that's why he blessed it. And that's why the miracle of the patriots winning the Revolutionary War against such a huge tyrannical system that was coming against them 
they won by the hand of God and the favor of God because they were seeking something that God himself designed. And so the favor was on it. So I just want to bless you to keep believing that that is the heart of God for this nation and that it is the heart of God for his people. And that is how the gospel and how the, the, the beauty of Christ moves into the earth when freedom is allowed to push it forth. So keep praying and keep believing God is bringing freedom.